endure for a night. I may go through something, but my joy is sure to return. My joy has been guaranteed. My joy shall come in and remove each and every hurt. Hallelujah. Oh, we can may endure for a night. My God, my God. Hallelujah. That ain't even my topic this morning. But I'm just got, I got caught up in that thing. That you just have to glorify God. I got caught up in that thing because I thought about what God has done for me. Hallelujah. I began to remember my personal testimony. I began to remember what it is that I went through. I began to remember the pain, the hurt, the disappointment. We've been made to it for a night. But all you got to do is hold on. And if you hold on, that joy is sure to return. Hallelujah. That joy is sure to return. Oh, bless the name of our God. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I spent, Brother Keith, I spent a bunch of, a lot of time in meditation. I spent a bunch of time in meditation. I'm always trying to learn a little bit more about our God. I study our God. I study each and everything our God has done. I want to know more about him. I talk to him. I, I pray to him. I do what they call ministering to our God. I meditate on what our God has said. Hallelujah. And when I begin to meditate on the things that our God has said, I begin to speak those things that our God has said. This is why it's going to be hard. You're going to be hard fetched to find me saying anything negative about anybody, no matter how negative they are. Uh -huh. It's going to be hard fetched. It's real hard for me to say something that does not speak life to somebody. I begin to speak life even when death is apparent. Yes, oh, right, my God. Right. I'm telling you, that's, 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 I spend this time with the Lord. And see, in the presence of the Lord, there's such a beauty. There's such a beauty. There's such a positiveness in the presence of the Lord. Yes. See, what we got to do is we can get to the point where we get the presence of the Lord around us. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. When we get the presence of the Lord around us, wherever we walk at, the presence will be there. And when the presence is there, we can walk into the sick room and the healing begin to take place. When the presence is there, you can walk into the courtroom and somebody is set free. When the presence is there, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. When the presence is there, you can touch what it is you need. You can speak to what it is you need. And you can cause it to come back to you when the presence is there. Oh, bless the name of our God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. But I spend so much time presence, meditating on the presence of God, meditating on what God has done, how good God has been to Brian K. Shea. Yes. Yeah. Hmm? I got to be personal. How good God has been. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. I can't even begin to share it all. If I took the time to share it all, we'd be here all day and then into the night. Because each and every time I think that he's done something real great, I'm just like the 24 elders. I bow down. I look back up again, and he's done something better. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's working in me. He's working through all of them. Oh, yeah. oh, my God, my God. Let me give you a title this morning. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Touch yourself and think about what it is that you're going through and say, this too shall pass. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a sickness. I don't care if it's a financial condition. I don't care if it's a relationship problem. If you get into a relationship with God Almighty, this too shall pass. It is not over. Oh, I love the song from last week when the young lady's minister said, it is not over until God says it's over. Until God begins to speak death to you, then life is automatically impeded unto you. It is not over until God has the last say so. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I do glorify God. But I spend so much time meditating on God because I want people to know the joy that I have. I want people to know what it is that God has done for me and what God can and will do for them. I want people to get saved. That's really what I do this for. I don't do this for rhyme, shape, or reason. I don't do this to get famous. I do this so that God will be glorified in someone's life and someone will come to the knowledge of who Christ Jesus is. And when they come to the knowledge of who Christ Jesus is, they can get into a relationship with God Almighty. Oh, my God. I do bless your name today, Lord. I bless your name today. As I was meditating on this, though, as I was meditating on the goodness of the Lord, and he spoke into my spirit, and I became acutely aware that there's so much depression in this world. There's so much depression in this world. There's so much depression. Depression is driven by many situations in life that we face. And we do face a lot. 
These are the last and evil days. Yeah. And that's just not a metaphor. That's just not a cliche a way to say it. These are the last days. The signs in the north, south, east, and the west. All you got to do is open your eyes each and every morning and watch a little bit of news, and you will hear in the background that these are the last days. There are wars and there are rumors of war. People are doing more and more decrepit things each and every day. Mothers against daughters, daughters against mothers, fathers against sons, sons against fathers. These are the last and evil days. Hallelujah. And in these last and evil days, we know that the Lord has said that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yeah. And your sons and your daughters will get to prophesy. Yeah. Old men will dream, dream. Young men will all have visions. Oh, my God. Yeah. These are the last days. Yeah. And we have to be prepared for these last days that we're in, y'all. Uh -huh. We've got to be prepared for these last days. Yeah. Yeah. But I know that people are, are so depressed nowadays. They are depressed because of situations such as loneliness. They're depressed because of situations such as illnesses, such as hopelessness. Yeah. They're depressed by many different things. I want to get to a point here today. Hallelujah. Many are hurting because of lack of an adequate job. Or if they have an adequate job, they're hurting because of a lack of adequate income at that inadequate job. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to encourage you just today that we've been made to do it for a night. But joy is sure to come in the morning light. I don't know about you, but I'm waiting on my joy. I'm waiting on my joy. I'm urging my joy to come. I don't know about you, but I believe that my joy is well on its way. I believe all I got to do is look toward the hill from which comes my help. And I see my joy on the hill. It's waiting for me to reach out and pull it in. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of our God. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Encouraging uh -huh. David said, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. People get so caught up in all the things that are going on around them. They get so discouraged by what's going on around them. Hallelujah. Because they're looking at things with their natural eyes. But when they begin to look at things from the spiritual standpoint, they'll begin to see the cake baked before it's still still a cake mix. They'll begin to see the box on the shelf and know that it's already been paid. When people begin to look at things through the spiritual, and they'll begin to see the omnipresent nature of God at work, and they'll see that this shall pass. They'll see that the things that are hindering them today will not hinder them in the future because guess what? This too shall pass. Yeah. This is just a stage. This is just a circumstance. This is just a situation. But this too shall pass. And when it does pass, I'm going to be in a place of my joy. I'm going to be a place of, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. If, you ever learn, if you ever learn to worship God in the midst of the trouble. Yeah. Uh, if you ever to worship and praise God in the midst of the circumstance. I like what I saw some on Facebook the other day. It says that when God opens one door and closes another, and you have no, not knew which way that you should go. I'm paraphrasing. It says something about you ought to praise him in the hall. Uh, you, you ought to worship him in the hall. You ought to glorify him because he's that worthy of the praise. You never know why you're in a holding pattern, why God placed you in a holding pattern. Don't get upset because the traffic is sick and you're not allowed to get to where you want to get. As soon as you want to get there, that could have been an accident up the road waiting to happen and you would have been in the midst of it. But God calls you to be delayed. Yeah. Oh, I do glorify God today. Hallelujah. I do magnify him today. Well, verse 5, I got to get back to the text. I'm getting so happy. Hallelujah. Let me get back to the text. Let me get back to the text. Hallelujah. Yeah, we face things. We face things. There are many hard things. And just because you are saved does not mean you will not go through. You're going to go through when you fail. You're going to go through when you fail. Hallelujah. There's a purpose in you going through even when you are saved. Hallelujah. If things came to you so easily, then what is the value of being saved? Huh? Because each and every person who, who would want something from God would pretend to be saved for the time period to get what they want from God for them. Okay? So what's the value of being saved if, if everything came to you so powerful, so easily? Huh? People would begin to rub God like he was I dream of ten. They would begin to make three wishes and then place God back into the box. Huh? They would not exalt the God that we serve. They would not extol the God that we serve. They would not worship the God that we serve. They would use the God that we serve. They would tempt the God that we serve. Instead of serving our God with a whole heart, they would only serve him with what they want. Oh, my God. Y'all better hear what I'm saying here. You better hear what I'm saying. This is a great talk already. This is a worthy talk. This is an honorable 
God. This is a God who has the world in his hand. A God who has all situations in his hand. A God who is speaking to the church right now and telling you to hold on just a little while longer because guess what? Yes. This too shall pass. Hallelujah. It shall be a memory. It shall be a blinking. I was speaking to the church before we moved to this building about 80 Court Street and I told him, I said, it seems so vivid right now that we're inside this little bitty wall. It seems so vivid right now we're inside a place where we got one toilet room. It seems so vivid right now that we're in a place where you got to go outside to change your mind. But if we just hold on a little while long, if we just hold on to the faith, if we just hold on, we're going to have it as a far memory because guess what? That too did pass. Yeah. That too did pass. That was just the end. That was just what God was getting ready to show. Oh my God. He was getting ready to show us the place. He was getting ready to take us to deeper depth and higher height. He was getting ready to raise us up so that we would come to a place where if we would glorify him in the city of the city, come to a place where we would magnify him in the city of the city, come to a place where we would understand that we must go up and reap the harvest. I know that we're going through some things. I know we're going through some things. But I tell you what, I'm still glad that, that we've been endured for a night. And the joy that us truly return. I'm still glad that God's anger does not stay always. Huh? I'm glad that God can forget and God said, I forget and I'll cast it as far as the east is from the west. Can you imagine if God was like an elephant? we all be in trouble. I thank God, I thank God that his memory is short and his love is long. Yeah. I thank God because if God remembered everything that I did, and God, if he imputed everything that I did unto me, I sure have been in hell a long time ago. I've been in the midst of the lake of fire. He would open the lake of fire just for a special rendition for Brian. Hallelujah. I do glorify God that I have been forgiven of my sins, that he will not hold those things against me. Hallelujah. I thank God that we've been endured for a night, but joy does return in the morning light. I thank God for his glory, his mercy. I thank God for his grace, because without the grace of God on my side, hallelujah, without his grace, oh my God, my God, let me get into this text here, y'all. I, I, I got some things here for you today. Because of God's favor, this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. You may say, Pastor, you don't know. You don't go through what I've gone through. My childhood was messed up. My parents were all messed up. My current situation yeah. is messed up. My children are messed up. But my friends, I hate to contradict you, and I, but I have to tell you, you must know this. No matter the hurt, the surgeon of the universe is able to heal even the deepest wounds. Yeah, right. Wounds that doctors can't see. Emotional scar tissue that is so deep that you have it repressed inside of you, and you don't even know why you ache when you're around certain people. Uh, scar tissue that is developed into a rough exterior, whereas to defend yourself, you display a rough exterior. You know, I, I, I have an ability to be able to see through people. I see people. I mean, I see people. I see where their hearts really are. I see where their hearts are. I'm able to walk up to him and I'm able to see in the spirit and see what he really is. And I'm able to see some things that they have gone through. The Lord may not give me specifics, but he gives me some generalization. Huh? And I begin to recognize the spirit that they operate in. Huh? I begin to recognize, don't believe me, don't think that pastor's naive. I'm not naive by a long shot. I promise you, I know things about you. Just because I don't share everything I know about you with you don't mean a thing. I know. But as I begin to see in the spirit, I also begin to see where it is that you're headed. Huh? I begin to see the goodness that God has placed inside you. I do begin to see where it is that you are trying to hide the kindness within your heart because too many people have hurt your heart in the past. I see that stuff. I see that stuff. But I'm here to tell you, if you would just allow God into your life, if you allow him to be into your life and, and to work some things out, if you allow the Lord to, to bless you the way that he wants to bless you, you will begin to understand that guess what? This too shall pass. This too shall pass. It will pass. 
I promise you that where it is you're going through, it is just a situation. Uh, it's just a situation. When I was young and in the arm, Brother Keith, I was in a situation, huh? And I didn't know I was in that situation. I was in a situation where I was in a classroom setting, and it was me and a whole bunch of group of other soldiers. We were learning, being taught something by these senior instructors. And as they were teaching us and stuff, they began to put a whole bunch of pressure on us. Okay, I want your underwear to be rolled six inches long. Crazy stuff. <laughs> they walk into your room, they open your drawer, they look at it, they drop a dollar bill, because a dollar bill is six inches long. And if it don't fit inside that dollar bill, they take the drawer and they'll dump it out. Pour it all out. Mind you, this is a group, we were leaders. We were young, but we were still leaders, and that bothered us. And we got to a point where we began to complain to them like, Get it. 
the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. As I was sitting here today, I was looking out and I was seeing a, a whole bunch of people were not here today. And I, I remember a lot of this circumstance, a lot of things they're going through. And we're going to keep them in prayer and stuff. But the enemy tried to speak to my mind and said, look at that. Look at that. But the devil is a lie. So guess what? You're the greatest minister that's going to be in this city. And yet, blessed be the name of the Lord. How you blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. You have one of the, you have one of the greatest pastors in this city. So blessed be the name of the Lord. You have one of the greatest ministerial teams in this city. Guess what? Because blessed be the name of the Lord. Because we're going to worship and praise God. No matter what it looks like in the natural, we're going to believe that God is on our side. We're going to believe that these things do not come to destroy. These things only come to make us strong. Because guess what? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, see, no matter how bad the situation is, it's not as bad as Job. Job did not give up. He had lost everything in the natural, but he still had that spiritual relationship. That's right, that's right. He kept on praying. He kept on praising. He kept on worshiping him. He kept on glorifying him. And in a short time period where Job there had the nerve to complain about his situation, God began to minister to him in such a way that's blowing science mind right now. God began to describe a snowflake and say each and every snowflake was different. We did not have the natural idea to see that, but because God carved each and every snowflake, that was so. My God, my God, you better hear what I'm saying here. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of our God. Mm, hallelujah. Guess what? Because Job had that spiritual relationship, and Job proclaimed God was good, and God was great, and God was grand. Because Job said God is going to make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. Job acknowledged and professed in his mouth, in his heart, saying that this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Hallelujah. Look at your circumstances. Look at your situation. Look at what the enemy has thrown at you. But yet you're still here living and breathing among the living. Hallelujah. Because guess what? What it is that you went through yesterday was not there to destroy you. God was just making you stronger. And guess what? Yesterday has passed. And you're in your presence right now. You're going to be blessed in your presence right now. And you're going to move forward to your future. You have a great future to look forward to. Oh, blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. Job knew that weeping would endure for a night. But Job knew that when the light of the world showed up, hallelujah, Job knew that the light would part the dark and the dark would tremble back up because the light of God, hallelujah, when the light of God enters a circumstance or situation, the light of God, which is not powered by electricity, which is not powered by coal, which is not powered by gasoline, the eternal light of God, which goes through
ahí es donde está Dios, papá. Ahí es donde está Dios. Él te fixa. So each and every morning. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Since I lived on the hill each and every morning, I get out there and I roll it back. Then I get it at the end of the street. Then I push it down the hill. I was young then. Then I take off. <laughs> Catch it. Swing in. Jump in. Plop the clutch. Crank it up. And roll back up the hill. <laughs> I provided so much entertainment. <laughs> My neighbor used to come outside. Bless his heart. He used to come outside. He talked about that even today. He'd come outside and watch me. He'd bring a cup of coffee every morning just to see how I would do. Especially on mornings when it was slick outside. And he told me, he said, boy, one day you're going to miss it. Never miss it. Blessed be the name of our God. <laughs> I always called it blessed be the name of our God. I'm rolling a ton, a one-ton car, and that one-ton car, I got to run and catch it and crank it and run back up the hill. Blessed be the name of our God. So I know what it feels like to have a hoopty. I promise you, I know what it feels like to, to not have a good position, to not have the money that you need to take care of the things that you need to take care of. But out of those things, it allowed me to have a compassion for people. It made me care for people even deeper than I thought I could. It made me be concerned for people's situations, circumstances. It made me not be so judgmental towards people because I knew that there was a God that brought me out. He can bring them out too. He can move their circumstances because guess what? This too shall pass. Amen. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Hallelujah. You may have experienced church hurt in the past. And I know there's a lot of people who experience church hurt. You experience church hurt, church deacon. I'm gonna bust at you, church mother, uh -huh. huh? Missionary, evangelist, huh? Musician, pastor. You experience things where they said things about you, they've done things to you. You experience those things, and because you experience those things, you you begin to grow an exterior. You begin to grow an agnostic viewpoint of people who are in church. You begin to doubt people who are in church. You begin to doubt. And the problem is because the reason that you were doubting is because you didn't have a relationship. Yeah. You had a religion. That's right. You didn't have a relationship. You had a religion. See, when you have a relationship, you don't cast it out just because right. of what other people do. Woo! You don't get mad at Peter when you have a relationship with Paul and say, Paul, I no longer want to be with you. When you have a relationship with God, you will weather the storm. You will hold out. You will trust God. You will believe God. You won't allow people to be the filter for your relationship. You will filter other people through the relationship you have with God Almighty. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. You may experience some church hurt, some problems in your past, but I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you what, what, what was your problem that came in your past. And what you was in your past is subtracted from the equation which equals your future. Right. Huh? What it is that you went through in your past is subtracted from the equation and you're looking a whole lot better in your future. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some of you looking a whole lot better in the present. <laughs> huh? I've been with some of you guys. I know what it is that some of you guys have done. Hallelujah. I know what it is that some of you guys have done in your life. But I know that God has delivered you from those things. I've seen the great changes that occurred in your life. I've seen how you change what it is that you say on Facebook. I've seen what it is you change in your conversation. I've seen what God has done for you. Oh, I know every now and then we may mess up a little bit, but we know that this too shall pass. Amen. We know that God is working it in, working out. God is blessing. God is turning things around in your life. So guess what? This too shall pass. I stood up here before you, I guess, about a month ago, and I knew there was something that was going on. There was something that was in the atmosphere. I was like, ooh, I was getting joyous and happy. I was getting real happy. God was fixing to say, you know what I'm talking about, but you would know in a moment. The postal service that came across, and they had offered an early retirement plan. And they set forth this certain criteria. They set forth this criteria saying that if you are age 50 with at least 20 years of federal service, that you without any penalty. I said, well, Lord, I'm not quite 50 yet. My God. 50 with 20 years, I said, I can't 
to meet that criteria, then I read a little bit further down in the offer. It said, okay, if you're any age with at least 25 years of service, you can go. I said, whoa, whoa hold on, I'm in age. <laughs> I am in age. And I got, oh, bless God, I got 31 years. Wow. 
really can. I have to send you something. So she went on to send me something in the mail and stuff. And in it, it was several scenarios, and it wasn't quite as clear cut as I wanted it to be. And because it wasn't as clear cut as I wanted it to be, I decided, well, I need to go and stay on. This is not the time. I mean, I was really playing. Guys, I was so happy about this thing. Yeah, he really was. I was happy. We've been in tour for a night, but joy. I was so happy about this thing. I was planning. I was planning. I was so disappointed when it didn't come through. I was more than slightly upset. I was thoroughly distracted. Man, I was making some plans for you guys. I'm telling you. I was going to sell my house by dropping the price so I could move down here and get myself a little house that was close by the church. And I was going to begin the life of Paul. I was going to begin the life of Paul. I was going to spend six hours in prayer. Hallelujah. Eight hours doing community service. I was going to do four hours in meditation. I was going to sleep two or three hours. And then I was going to get back up and start it all over again. I had three hours of writing list in there. I had some things list in there. Brother Keith, I had some big plans, brother. I was ready to roll this thing because I said, Lord, look at what God is doing in my life. He's preparing me for greater.
Somebody got blessed by that. Somebody got blessed by that. And in the same token that Sister Shea was even saying this morning, hallelujah, what can separate us from the love of God? Huh? Not principality, not demons, not rulers. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Only we can step outside of the hand strip of God. Yeah. Only we can do it. Nothing else can separate us. Hallelujah. The grace of God is stretching out in abundance. The humbling thing about the grace is that the measure he gives will cover you. The measure that God gives will cover you. There's nothing that you, and, and this is the same thing, right? This, this is actually true. This, this is something that, that you find in the scriptures. Hmm? God will not give you what is needless. There's nothing that you can go through that God does not have a grace to cover you. Nothing that you can go through. No matter what the pain is, God can give you enough grace to cover you through that situation. That's why it says we can may endure for a night. But guess what? The grace comes in the midnight hour and begins to work things out and you begin to work things on your behalf for your betterment. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we must understand that, y'all. I mean, I mean, I was contemplating retirement. Man, I was there. I was there, boy. I was, I was ready to get but as I contemplate the, the fact that retirement wasn't as clear cut as I thought it was going to be, I began to grasp a hold to the promises of God. Huh? That God still has great plans for you. You never know why you're carrying a load. You never know why you're carrying a certain load. God will allow you to carry a load for someone else and you don't even know you're caring for them. Huh? And your blessings are dependent upon how well you carry that load. Huh? God will give you the supernatural strength to go on in the midst of your trouble. God will continue to bless you as long as he said, Lord, I'm holding on to your unchanging hand. The world around me may be almost intolerable, but guess what, God? You've given me the grace to carry out the mission which you called me to, and I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. I'm going to keep on pressing. I'm going to keep on pushing. Oh, blessed be the name of God. We gotta understand, y'all. Trouble gonna last always. I'm getting ready to close, by the way. Trouble gonna last always. Amen. Paul said it best when he said, I imagine the trouble of this present world is not meant to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in you. But you gotta go through the trouble to get to the glory. Huh? You can't just go straight to the glory. You got to go through the trouble to get to the glory. You, oh my God. Storms don't come to destroy you. The storms come to put you through the fire that's required to refine you. Understand this. Gold is not found on the ground in these beautiful nuggets that you see. It's not. Nor does coal come forth as easily as people make it appear. As with all good things, you got to first remove the dust. With gold, you must wash, break away, burn up, and melt. Coal, you must chisel, blast, and cut out. And the thing about coal is that what you see now is brought forth in a raw state. Because if the coal would remain there, if it would stay there underneath that pressure, if the coal were there any longer, it would go about through a metamorphosis change. It would go through because of the sheer pressure of what is underneath and begin to change the color spectrum. And once was once dark, and unclear will begin to shine and become light and brilliant. In other words, coal does become diamond. Give him time. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. See, what we must understand is that God lets you go through things, not so that you will be God lets you go through things so that he can show you the greatness that is in you. The thing about God, God will have you do something very strange. And at the time, you can't connect one thing to the other. You don't know why you're doing it. Huh? You become like the karate kid. You can't connect what it is that you're doing to what it is that you want. You can't begin to, to phantom how one is related to the other. God has a way that he does that in your life. He has a way 
way where he, he will take things that, that may not have nothing to do with what it is that you're seeking. I was talking to Minister Adrian yesterday, and I was saying, you know, God does that to you. God did not want the life of Isaac. He didn't want the life of Isaac. He didn't want Abraham to cut Isaac's throat on that altar. But God wanted to see the dedication of Abraham. God wanted to show Abraham how committed he was to the Father. In the same token, this is why God asks of you things that he really don't want from you. God don't want your money. But he knows that anything that becomes a barrier to him, anything that becomes a barrier to relationship, anything that comes in between you and him becomes your God. So he wants you to, to place all of your trust in him and not your trust in man. Oh, my God, my God. See, there's some of you guys, there's some gold inside of you. There's some gold inside of you. There's some diamonds inside of you. But to get to that gold, to get to that diamond, you have to go through the work. God sometimes lights a fire underneath you to get the best out of you. Huh? He'll light a fire underneath you to get the best out of you. When I went to that situation with the post office, when I cried out to God and the interceding Christian center was birthed, I was at a point in my life where I had done so many great things with the postal service itself that I didn't think it would get any better than it had gotten. But that very same said year, I ended up getting another very high award. A higher percentage of time was saved. A higher percentage of money was saved because I cried out to God. And God said, I got to get the glory out of your life. I got to get every bit of glory out of your life. I just cannot have a piece of glory. I got to know 